Greetings everyone and welcome to another WIST technology tutorial. In today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how I've revised the course descriptions on our curriculum map. Um, previously I had used a Google form uh, that when you submitted it would then add to an awesome table which had a link to edit your response. Um, and it wasn't very pretty. Um, it was efficient and it it got you to the the data but I really wanted a way that would allow teachers to be a little bit more creative in the way that they display uh, course descriptions. Uh, so these are documents that consist of, of three parts. Uh, they address mm -hmm. the overarching questions for the entire course. Um, they provide sort of the content and structure of the course and then describe the overall means of, of assessment. Um, and often these are very similar to items that are listed on a back to school night handout for parents at the beginning of the year. So what you're looking at here is an updated version. Um, this is the file cabinet view of awesome tables. And I'm going to walk you through how I've crafted this because I did have to make some changes to it in order to accommodate uh, my needs. But some of the things I really like about it is I can search uh, the file by file name. So I just have to start typing and the files come back. They're pretty responsive. Um, if I'm looking for my own files and I'm a teacher, I can filter the editor column by the name of the teacher. Um, so it's, it's pretty, pretty fast. And then when you actually click on a unit, um, it'll actually open up in the full-blown Google Doc where you can edit and make changes if you have editing rights to that document. All of these documents live in a folder in this Google Drive uh, that is uh, viewable to uh, anyone in the domain. So all teachers can see all of the course descriptions. So here's how I went about this. Um, what led me to this idea was a script that I found, believe it or not, right here, communicating with prisoners. Um, and the reason this was interesting to me was because what this script allows you to do is to list the file names in a Google Drive folder along with the corresponding URLs. So this got me two-thirds the way I wanted to be. So I was, the only piece missing was the names of the editors of the documents. So that's the piece that I wanted to figure out how to modify in this script. And I got a lot of help from uh, Stephen Gale on uh, Google+. Plus. Uh, he spent a, a good portion of his time helping me craft just what I needed to do with this script. I was then able to take that code and apply it uh, in a new context um, to get my file cabinet working the way it does today. So the file cabinet view, there's a beautiful documentation here on their website. Uh, you can just Google uh, file cabinet view awesome tables and it'll the first link will be this one. And the best way to go about it is to simply follow the tutorial. Make a copy of this spreadsheet and then just follow the steps. Um, so when you make a copy and you, and you have it on your own, it looks something like this, all right? This is kind of the edited version though, but this is what you get. You get two tabs at the bottom, files and a template. Um, and then it literally pulls in all of the documents in that Google Drive folder. So I needed to get this editor field into the file cabinet because it wasn't there. So if we go ahead and look at the code, and it's not a lot of code that I had to modify, but the first thing I did was I made sure when the script was writing out the headers that it included a place for the document editors. Um, this was not in the original script. So I added this piece. 
then I knew from below that these are the awesome tables filters. So here, and I've worked with awesome tables before, so I have a good understanding of what they do. So I basically had to make sure these filters corresponded to the one above. So I wanted to be able to do a keyword search on the title, so I used a string filter here. So these correspond with one another. And you want to make sure you have the same amount. These should match. So I think there was something like 16 or 17 of these headers. Um, so I also went through to make sure I was hiding the ones that I didn't want visible on my Google site. Um, because every so often the script refreshes um, and if you don't get this right, um, things don't look right on your Google site. So you want to make sure you have all of the filter set the way that you want. So as I scroll down further in the code, it was right around lines 122, yeah. So the original code ended, or this portion of it, ended right at 121. There was nothing after it jumped from here down to the uh, icons, HTML icons. So the bit that took a while for me to figure out, um, but I finally was able to, to sort it out with some help, uh, was this bit of adding the editors and then retrieving their names. So I kind of typed that in there. And then at the very end of the script, I had to make sure that it would write it, it would print that information to the spreadsheet. So I then I figured out that this was where it was pushing the data to the, the spreadsheet, and I added this editors to string. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know what this what the formal name of this is called. If it's an object or what, I don't know. I'm not not really a developer, but I added this here, and this allowed it to be to print the names of the editors in the spreadsheet, so they could show up in the awesome table. So that's pretty much it. So you can see when you install and authorize a script, you can it starts a syncing process. So if new folders are added, um, they're automatically added to the spreadsheet, hence added to the file cabinet view of my awesome table. So, so all you really have to do is once you install the script, you pick your folder, um, and then you're good to go. You just embed the gadget and I just use the default settings that were available to me uh, in this window. When you log into Awesome Tables, uh, it'll show you kind of the settings that are uh, used in the demo uh, version of this uh, file cabinet view. So uh, there you have it. So the idea was simply to um, take the default file cabinet view and add the ability to add who the editors are of the documents, which allows me to search these course descriptions uh, by teacher name. So, And then if teachers uh, don't find their course descriptions here, they can add it via the Google form on the bottom, which then uses Autocrat to add the file to the same folder where all of these live. So I know that's probably a lot to take in, but I really like the aesthetics. It's a much better view of the course descriptions. Um, so thanks for watching. Bye.